<laughs> you were smiling before. <laughs> don't, stop, don't stop just because you're in the chair. Yeah. Um, then the second one. My name is Sandra, and I and I embraced Islam ten years ago at the age of 31. I was born in Colombia, and I was born into a Catholic family. Since a very young age, I was very involved in the church, and especially in the choirs. So at the age of six, I started singing in all the Christmas events and Easter events, and I was pretty much into it. And uh, that's how my life developed. I was very close to the church, especially anything that had to be with music, I was into it. I joined a choir, a children's choir, and I was being always um, active in the church. So when I finished my high school, I, I realized the love I had for music, and I wanted to move forward to it. And I knew I had a very, very strong potential as a singer. I had been done a lot of uh, like uh, solo singing in classical repertoire. I was um, very much involved in, in a lot of le Colombian level musical performances. So I joined the musical program to develop myself as an opera singer. And I finished my career as an opera singer in Colombia. Then I moved to Austria. I, I, I was accepted to, to enter in the Vienna Conservatory. And then there was, I was exposed for the first time to what the real life of music was. Um, I was very, very dedicated in my music, but I was always feeling an emptiness in me. Uh, of course, I, I moved alone. I, I went by myself and I was living with friends. Um, but always my, my family was not there, you know. Uh, so I would always feel like I had the voice of my family and telling me, keep connected to, to your faith. So I remember every day going through the conservatory, I will stop and I will go and enter into the church. And I remember my, my impression going inside and seeing all these statues and seeing people mainly with white hair. You would never very really see young people there. Uh, although the places were amazing, it was really like a piece of art, but there was no soul inside of them. But I just wanted to keep connected to my family and to what I was as a child, connected to the church. So I will keep on going. And um, I remember going inside the church and feeling like, okay, there's this Mary looks beautiful today. Let's put a candle here and, and make a prayer here. And the next, the next day I will go and to another church and maybe there was a church with the name of a saint. So I will go and pray to the saint. And, and it was just, you know, starting to feel like it's really confusing. Um, when you are out of the environment where you are grown, you start to make uh, your questions and start to think outside of the box. And, and as much as I wanted to keep connected to God, because that's how I was raised, I was feeling there were many things that were not clear to me, and there were many questions that were opening up, and I, that I wanted to understand. But I knew since the beginning that I arrived to Austria that once I would finish my degree, I wouldn't like to stay there. I, I felt like I was completing my degree to please my family. I, w I grew up feeling that, uh, that I wanted to please everybody, and I felt that with my singing, I made many people happy. I, I could bring peace, I could m make a, a, a religious event, a wedding, beautiful. Uh, sometimes after the wedding, people wouldn't say how nice the priest spoke, but how beautiful the music was. It was like music was the center of the of the faith, like uh, people go to the, were going to the church, looking to to being uh, satisfied with the, with the music. People will go to these amazing uh, cathedrals just to hear the music. And once the big pieces of of the of the repertoire were done uh, halfway the the mass, suddenly the church would be empty. I remember Japanese buses stopping just next to the cathedrals, and then the church would be full of people. And once the communion started, that usually the, if you think about Schubert, like uh, masses or Mozart masses, the music goes until the communion. And then after that, once the communion was over, the, the, the church was empty and the priest was really upset. Once I continue um, studying and I was about to reach my, my final diploma, my final degree, I remember feeling this sense of loneliness and, and uh, confusion and frustration and not clarity where my life was going towards to. 
I was raised uh, to be somebody helpful in the society, very caring, um, very loving. My family has done amazing charity work, and, and, and I grew up with all that. And then I would see how the behavior of people in the music world was the opposite, uh, an environment of, of uh, one pushing the other one or doing things that were not right in order to, to, show, to show or to, to glow. And I couldn't see myself doing that. It was very difficult because I knew uh, there was a big expectation behind what I was doing. So I remember very well, maybe two months before finishing my degree, and, and going like it was late, and, and I remember this prayer I did. And that day, I, I, I felt for the first time I'm not praying to, to a saint or to the Virgin or to Jesus. I, I felt I was praying with the real, truly God. And I was saying, please guide me. I'm completely lost. I don't know what I should do with my life. So please, please guide me. And it was a very truly do a prayer for guidance. And I and had the opportunity at that moment either to, to go to Spain and join an aunt or to apply to, to move as an immigrant to Canada. I applied. And it was amazing. After three months, just at the moment of my degree being uh, finished, I got the acceptance to, to move to Canada. So I felt this is a, this is a clear sign. I should, I should go there. Canada is an amazing place because it's very multicultural. I had the opportunity to, to see people from many places that I never had the opportunity before in, in my country or in Australia just studying. And I, I got in touch with Muslims. And uh, at, at an event, a multicultural event, and there they start asking me about my faith. I felt um, I have to be strong, and, and I know I have my doubts, but this is who I am. So I would, you know, try to repeat what I was raised up having to say. But then, of course, as a diplomatic way, if somebody had asked me about my religion, I had to ask back. So it was the first time I was encountering Muslims, and so I, I was asking, okay, so what do you believe in? I didn't know anything about Islam, and I was amazed to know that, that in Islam, Maryam, the Virgin Mary in, in Catholicism, was a very important woman, one of the fourth most important women in Islam, and that Jesus, Isa, was a very important prophet, and that they had the same prophets that uh, I, I grew up uh, knowing in, in, the, in the Christianity. So I, I didn't know that, so I was really mesmerized. I felt like, we are so close. I didn't know. I just heard always from the news, you know, these people are doing things that are wrong. So I started to, to want to know more about Islam. I remember going to the priest in the university and, and uh, asking him, what do you think about these questions I have? And I, I felt there was no answer. And and then if I would go to Islam, I would see like it's so clear and pure and, and uh, everything is there. It's, it's so close, but it completely started to answer all my questions. So Ramadan was coming soon. Very blessed to be invited for, to, to a mosque for an iftar. And it was going to be tarawih after. And since the communities are small, people will come for the iftar and then they will stay until the prayer of Tarawih. So I remember going for the Ftar and I, I remember how, how these ladies who had been fasting for a whole day would give me food first and I, I was like very impressed how people were not just jumping, they were doing a prayer before, before eating. And then I saw for the first time the prayer of Islam and it was the most beautiful thing I, I had encountered until the moment to see how people were all standing in lines and doing the same movements at the same time. And, and then to hear the Quran for the first time, for me was like a kinesthetic experience. I remember feeling like I, I was embraced and uh, it, it was something really out of this world. I, I felt I need to listen more of this and I need to know more about this religion because I, I really, really love how, how it looks and how it feels. It was for me that really the spirituality was there uh, and I wanted more of it. And then I had the opportunity to, to compare both. And for me it was clear that what really the connection with the, with the only God was, was in this, in this Islam. So once I came back from Colombia, 
I I did I had to do my shahada. That was for me. It was only very clear. It took it took more or less like like a year or like less than a year. But then it was just the beginning. You know, you you need to learn so many steps and you need to give yourself time. And um, of course, I I didn't tell my family right away. Um, I I had I start chatting with them, especially with my brother who was present in Canada, then my parents over the phone, I would just throw questions. And then, of course, they, they start seeing that there was some, something happening with me because I was making questions that I didn't do. And uh, see, Jesus, you, did you know that Jesus is, is so important in, his, in Islam, but he's a prophet? Did you, did, did you know that, that God doesn't have to die to, to forgive us? It's everybody's responsibility to perform in this life to, to gain uh, heaven. It's not granted that because somebody does something for you, that means that you're going to go to heaven. Like, it's really up to each one. So they started to see that I was questioning myself, and in my path I was questioning them. So, but I just, it took me a year to, to tell them about uh, my conversion. And once I told them, which for them was almost like, uh, you know, at that point they, my brother already knew because... He, he would see me and I was, you know, going to the Islamic centers and meeting with people. And so he, he saw, obviously, my change. And then I told them. They, they kind of uh, accepted, but I felt I need to do something, even for the people in my environment, to see that I'm truly meaning my, my conversion, my, my new faith. I have to put a hijab on. I, I remember telling a friend, oh, next Ramadan, I will start wearing hijab. Um, and then, and then she told me, why do you have to wait until Ramadan? And, and um, I, I remember coming back home and, yes, why do I have to wait? And I started reflecting on it and I said, very good to show that Islam was good. So it was a, like a protection of myself if I, had to, if I were to do something that it was not, uh, you know, not accepted. I would remind myself, oh, I have the hijab, I need to be good. So alhamdulillah, they, they accepted me, they respected me. Um, mainly with my mom and my father, I had a lot of opportunities to talk about it in detail. With my brothers and sisters, it's, there's more like a, an acceptance. At the beginning of my conversion, I felt like I had to talk with everybody. I need to tell everybody. Everybody has to be Muslims. And then I realized everybody needs a time, and it's only Allah who guides. And through my behavior, I do more than through speaking out. So every time I, I see them, um, they... They can, they can feel it, and, and I, 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 my, my du'as, they are always there, and I pray that Allah will guide them. Islam has been, for me, the greatest gift I ever had. Like, now I'm married, I have another daughter, and I keep on telling my husband and my daughter, I love you a lot, but for me, the first thing, and the best thing that ever happened is Islam. It completely took away all the questions I had, and all the anxiety I had, and, and gave me this peace and this light and this clarity that I didn't have before. I guess for me the, the main concern was that I, I felt I have to give up my music because I felt I couldn't deal with music and Quran at the same time. So there was a big transition there, but uh, I ended up giving up uh, music and, that, and I completely never missed it after that, you know. I, I felt that all what the skills that I acquired through my studying, alhamdulillah, I was able to, to use them to, to learn about Quran, to learn how to read Quran and uh, to memorize and to be able to, to learn the language. You and me and everybody and everything around us was born to, to submit to the, the Creator. Once you feel that you belong to Him, and that you know that you're going to meet him after you die. You should not wait until this moment comes for you, because you never know when this coming might come. It might come tomorrow, and you don't want it to be too late. And the reward of being a Muslim is so much greater than all the difficulties that you might face in your, in your transition. It is actually very, very easy if you hold yourself to, to, to Allah, and he will make everything easy for you. Just put your trust there, he will make the path for you. Sincere prayer to him from, your, from the deepest place in your heart. And that will bring the clarity and that will give you the strength that you need in order to make your decision.